Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to do the install video for getting this into here. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay guys, here's the plan. So I've, I've laid the radiator on top of this. I've measured in between my core support where the old 4.3 radiator went, which you know it sits on the outside. But in here is 31 and a half. That radiator in the floor is 32. So I've done some math here and I wanna leave a 3 8 gap here so it's not contacting the side. And I wanna leave a 3 8 gap here. So what I've decided to do is I'm gonna split this and take this out, put it back in, move it over the amount of space I need to get my three inch gap plus get the radiator in here. And what I've decided to do, I didn't wanna to get too far ahead of you, but I've drilled out these spot welds. And I notice a lot of guys when they drill out spot welds with a spot weld drill, they'll drill bit, they'll take this drill bit and they will drill a hole completely through. I'm not gonna do that. As you can see, what I did is I center punched my spot weld and I drill it just enough where I can take my putty knife or my scraper and just prise it up. So what I'm gonna do, again, I'm gonna cut this out, make room and push it over so we can get the radiator in here. I'm also gonna trim out this lip up here so we can get the radiator recessed into the core support. And I saw another guy on another channel, and if you can see, there's also spot welds up here. And this, this outer shell, when I cut this, I think I'm just gonna take this off and remove it and then I found some rubber grommets that I'll show you guys right quick before we get started. And I'll put the links to these grommets in the description. But I plan on drilling the hole here and putting these in there as isolators so it'll have a rubber mount to sit on. And I found a uh, this on Amazon. It's the perfect size diameter and it's the perfect size cushion to fit those posts on the bottom of the radiator as you can see so i'll take a, a step drill and drill this out and it'll have an isolator at the bottom so it can set on something rubber and then uh, i've got an idea for the top mounts i may actually bolt this to the top of the core support or i may even use the old 4.3 so i'm going to set up we'll get started on this eventually we're going to get it all cut out get it painted and put it on the truck and see what it looks like so stay tuned Okay guys, I got you down off the tripod. You saw in the time lapse, I drilled out all of these spot welds. I also marked over the clearance that I needed and I wanted to take you down and show you what I've cut out. So I removed this piece first and probably what I'll probably do is put this back in and let it overlap just as a cap, tack it back in. I took and you can see that piece has been removed. But I made sure I was cutting well below this piece here. I cut well below it, as you can see, and then I cut this piece out. When I got this piece cut out, I also drilled out all of the spot wells and I took this second layer off the top. Coming over here, there's a little ridge. Your radiator's gonna hit that. So I cut that little piece out. And some, some of you that may have radiators, 
that will fit inside of here with this cap already here will have that same ridge here so you'll have to cut that out i have removed the hood latch mechanism because these screws we're gonna have to figure out something to do here they will protrude into the radiator uh, one guy just cut them off cut them off flush with your nut certs here or inserts whatever they're called so let me get the radiator in here oh i also knocked down these folded tabs they are the same same type tabs they look like this but they're on the bottom so i have knocked those down on both sides now we're going to set the radiator in here and mark where it's going to be located mark for these posts and drill the holes come back and probably have to notch this out for our radi radiator fill cap so stick around and we'll get this thing installed okay here's where we're at so basically what i did here is i, I measured an inch and three eighths off the back or actually the front of the radiator core support and i marked my hole and i went a quarter of an inch over from that lip that i beat down this way and mark that hole and i'll show you what i'm talking about at the first of the video if you noticed this is an old core support and you can see why i changed it this uh, the battery busted and it rotted this one out but when i when i beat this down and folded it over that line right there on the edge i went over a quarter of an inch and an inch and three eighths from here and i drilled the hole for my post i came back with a bigger drill bit uh, i believe this is about a one inch hole uh, it's not pretty but you can see it's going to have rubber all the way around my radiator post, so it's going to be isolated very well. Also, what I've done, I took a four-inch hole saw, and I took me some tape, made me a pattern, and as you can see, I made a nice contoured, I taped this on here, folded it over, give you a top view. Kind of give it a neat look, instead of just a square cut, and it looks all chopped up, so... That's what I did there. Oh, and by the way, here, I told you I was going to use a step drill to drill it out, but the drill bit, by the time it gets to the bottom, it's going to hit the inside. And I didn't, you can drill all the way through, that's fine, but I didn't. Basically, what I did is I took a punch and I punched this down and I beveled the bottom. Let me see if I can show you. Just take this off for a second. And you can see that little knot right there. I just knocked it down enough because the post of the radiator will stick down and hit that even on the rubber grommet. Um, I got this piece of aluminum. What I'm going to do is cut it 26 inches long. That is the length of the fan shroud, width of the fan shroud, and I'm going to put some bolts in it and bolt it straight to this to cover up all of this here. And I may even polish this to make it look like the radiator. I also went to O'Reilly and I got this 760 force uh, windshield washer hose or vacuum tubing and I'll split it and put it around here and there's the part number but again I'll leave it in the description below as well as the Home Depot part number for this piece of aluminum you can probably find this aluminum uh, at Lowe's but I was at Home Depot that day I did get this cut out and I've got it pushed back in and as you can see I'm gonna mark this or I've got it marked and I'm gonna cut this out Cut this out down here, the little piece that overhangs right here. It gives me the perfect gap for my radiator. There's a three inch or a three eighths uh, gap on each side. So I'm gonna tack this in. Next thing I'm gonna do is get this done. I'm gonna sand it down with a Scotch Sprite pad, scuff it up, paint it, get the aluminum cut and get it all back together. And when I get it painted, I, I won't do that on camera. Or time lapse that I'll just get it done and then kind of walk you through what I've done then we'll take it over there and we'll put it on the truck and see what it looks like with the radiator put in all the bolts in it and everything so let's get that done and I'll turn you back on and we'll see what the finished product looks like okay this is not your typical install video usually you get to see the product installed after it's completed and it is complete but I'm going to take it back off the bench and, and show you a, a, a good tour of it, kind of pan through some things. But first of all, you can see how I spaced the radiator. It is away from, it's no metal-to-metal -metal contact here. The inch and three-eighths and that quarter-inch 
those holes for those posts worked out perfect. I'm gonna put me some weather stripping foam in here to seal these air gaps, close those off. It also give me plenty of space to put my bolt clips back in here for my hood latch mechanism. So I did cut the bolts off, but that still gives me enough space so I don't have any worries when I put those bolts in of them running into the radiator. I finished out the fill cap with that 730 seconds tubing. It looks great. Probably gonna go back and epoxy this thing on here because when you start trying to take this cap off, you bump it, you, you take it off. I filled in all the holes up here. And basically, if you guys don't know, when you're welding, you can take a piece of brass. And what I did, I put a piece of brass on one side and welded to the other and it will make a smooth finish on the other side or somewhat smooth. But I got it all painted, just some Rust-Oleum, you know, Walmart paint or, you know, Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever. I did polish that piece of aluminum. I hand polished that to kind of match. And if you'll notice, I took some of those, uh, if you've seen my door video, these door, these bumper uh, trim rings, I put those on there. Kind of give it a little, little splash of color. I, I do have um, AN fittings plugging off my oil cooler. So that's a pretty expensive plug, but that's what I had. So um, I'll put those parts in the description, but I'll take it off, set it on the workbench and give you another slow motion tour and we'll end out the video. Okay, we got it back out of the truck. I wanted to just show you some things that uh, you couldn't see in the truck. Like for example, this is where I welded back in the piece I cut out. This is on the driver's side and I chose the driver's side because it was much wider. I narrowed it up. It kind of looks almost identical to the one on the passenger side, but it still gives you enough clearance when you drop your body mount bolts in to get those in, no problem. Um, I come back up here. I talked about these. These are M20 by 1.5. If you can find just a plug, it'd be much cheaper than using an M20 by 1.5 by 6AN with a cap. That's an expensive block off plug. I did that piece of aluminum that came from Home Depot. Basically what I did, I sanded it down with some uh, 2000 grit sandpaper all the way up to about 5000 grit. And I used, used some mother's wheel polish it's just mother's mag and aluminum wheel polish. I use it on my weld wheels to polish those guys up. It did take some elbow grease to get it that polished, but it looks a lot better to me than just a piece of, you know, matte finished aluminum. Again, I showed you this over on the truck. These are the wheel uh, bumper bolt uh, covers I used in my door panel video. If you hadn't seen that door panel video, check it out. I'll show you those. Uh, coming over here, again, these are just 3 8 Regular pipe plugs, no, nothing special about those. That 760 uh, um, force tubing, that worked well. So I, I'm really pleased the way it turned out. I did uh, put my wires on the bottom. This cover is symmetrical, so I just took it off and flipped it around. So I'm going to put these in the tray where the lighting harness goes, the factory lighting harness. But that's, that's it, guys. That's, that's how you get an Amazon radiator into the S10 core support and kind of give it a little, give it a little uh, splash of, of color up there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I appreciate you coming back. Uh, hit that like button if you like it. If you want to see more content like this, if you're not a subscriber, I'd love to have you as one. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode.